Um, I think we all recognize that uh, neurotechnology is uh, at a point of uh, significant growth. Um, I won't use the word exponential because that's, uh, I don't know exactly what that means, but where it's a, a growing field with a lot of uh, a lot new technologies being developed, a lot more interest, uh, both within academia and in industry. Um, and it's really a, a broad and inclusive field. Uh, so I, as a neurosurgeon and a neuroscientist, have a, a strong interest in it because as a clinician, I uh, implant brain stimulators to try and improve function. Uh, but the work that I do as a clinician uh, couldn't happen without uh, the neuroscience uh, behind it and without the engineering to develop the technology. Now, unfortunately, from a clinical perspective, the uh, clinical engineering is a little slower to develop than uh, we all might like, and translating what is really cutting edge uh, neurotechnology from uh, the lab to uh, the bedside or to the operating room is a little slower than we'd like. But the, the goal of this type of meeting is to bring all of us into a common forum where uh, clinicians, neurosurgeons, neurologists, rehab physicians, as well as engineers, be it what if you call yourself a neuroengineer, an electrical engineer, or a materials engineer, um, and neuroscientists all get to talk together um, and interact and share uh, with each other what we are doing. We purposefully designed uh, the program into different segments uh, with at least pairs of speakers or two to three speakers, so we hear uh, different uh, perspectives on similar topics. So for example, uh, the session that I'm gonna speak in is on uh, visual prostheses, um, and uh, I will share what I've been doing, but we also have Dr. Wen Tai Lu, who is a professor in uh, bioengineering who has done tremendous work in this area. So you'll hear two different perspectives and how our areas will intersect, and we're hoping we'll highlight these intersections and promote uh, greater interaction. Uh, I don't know if you wanna make a couple comments, Nathia. No, she doesn't. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it, you know, like he, like he said, we're very excited to, to have you all here because I really think that this is a great opportunity, an inter interdisciplinary opportunity. And we also have students, junior faculty, postdocs, se very senior faculty. So I'm hoping that we can, you know, have some, some good interactions, good discussions about interdisciplinary work and come up with some great uh, future projects that we can, uh, you know, foster in this kind of uh, forum. So, with that. Yeah, and so uh, I'll make one other statement since we have a few minutes. Uh, one of our takeaways from the last meeting we had was, uh, was to discuss how we uh, continued this interaction, how we make it grow. Um, besides having meetings like this, besides having uh, monthly seminars, uh, and we all decided that students are an outstanding bridge to make that happen. Uh, and that perhaps one of the important uh, cornerstones of this program should be to have a interdisciplinary uh, training program. Uh, and I wanted to update everyone that uh, Nanthia and I have been in uh, close discussions with uh, the NIH. Obviously, you don't just discuss things with the NIH to get awarded. Uh, but we've been um, working uh, very uh, diligently to learn about what it is that makes a successful program, learning from other programs across the country. Um, I think University of Pennsylvania has a very successful program, and others do as well, uh, to really optimize our opportunities to uh, enhance this interdisciplinary training. Uh, I think it also, you know, I was just having a discussion before we started this meeting that all of us are really busy. Uh, many of us have uh, many grants that we're already working on and to stop and try and build bridges is sometimes difficult, but students are often the best way to uh, try and uh, initiate that bridge building. Uh, so we're ho hopeful that that will uh, do the same. I also want to acknowledge uh, that we have been seeking uh, industry support. It's been a little bit slower than we'd like, um, but uh, I do want to acknowledge uh, Medtronic uh, that did uh, give us a $25,000 uh, grant to support our Center for Neurotechnology. We haven't spent it, so don't think that we've been uh, <laughs> doing anything nefarious. Uh, what's that? Today a little bit. We, we, we're using some of it to support today, like the live streaming as well as the food. Um, but we want to, uh, besides building uh, these uh, bridges, I'll, I'll use the word again, here amongst us, we want to build uh, relationships with industry. 
because industry really, uh, they have resources that we don't. They have perspectives that we don't, and they actually value our perspective and resources and innovation as well. And I think it's an important uh, uh, relationship to foster and build further. Uh, so the one final acknowledgement is uh, this is supported by a uh, grant or uh, uh, the, the, the Brain Research Institute provides funding through uh, affinity groups that apply for, uh, so we applied as an affinity group, actually Nantia did the application for an affinity group to foster interest in neurotechnology and this is supported by that as well.